This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter deals with chargeable gains for companies and deals with the major topic of reliefs. Now, we have already dealt with reliefs um, in the capital gains tax chapters, and I would hope that you have watched the relief chapter particularly before you do this chapter because the information is dealt in great detail in the relief chapter for individuals for capital gains tax and the only relief that is pertinent to limited companies is rollover relief. And I went into quite some detail about the conditions and the assets and how that works with some examples and um, some questions so uh, if you haven't looked at the chapter for individual reliefs for capital gains tax purposes, then please stop this uh, lecture that you're watching now and go back and watch that one beforehand um, because it will make what we're going to do now here uh, much more easy to understand because you've done it before. Um, if there has been a time span between doing the capital gains tax chapters and this one, it may be worth going back and reviewing that initial chapter um, just to bring everything back to your mind before you go on to this. So rollover relief, replacement of business assets. So what happens here again is rolled over or deferred where it arises on the disposal of a qualifying business asset where the sales proceeds are reinvested in another qualifying a business asset and there are some conditions okay so both of the old and the new assets must fall within these categories they must be land and building or fixed plant and machinery they must be used in the business that's the second condition and these conditions you need to bring to mind um, when you are dealing with a capital gains tax position um, calculations information from an exam question for companies. Um, the gain is not taxed immediately but postponed until you make a disposal of that without any further investment because of course you can roll and roll and roll. Um, the postponement is achieved by deducting the gain made from the old asset from the cost of the new one. That then uh, brings us to a base cost. If the proceeds are not fully reinvested, then the surplus um, can amount to a gain. Because if you sell one building, for example, and you roll over all the proceeds that you've received into the new one, you've got no cash. No cash, no tax. If you keep some of the cash back for whatever reason, then that potentially could be uh, chargeable to tax. Uh, there is a time span. 12 months before, 3 months after, so that's your third condition. And you must therefore make a claim within 4 years. So we're going to have a look at example number 1. So JM bought a building for use in business in October 1993. So it's a business one, it's used, it's an actual uh, business asset used in the business. And it was sold in March 2023 for 400,000. So that's our proceeds. That's our cost. Now, don't forget with this, you've got indexation as well. It needs to be added on to the computation that we would have used for individuals. Um, and in June 2022, they bought some land for use in the business for 500,000. So did they reinvest all the proceeds? Yes, they did because they got 400,000 and they've reinvested 500,000. So yes, they did. Is it used in the business? Old and new, yes. Are they business assets? Yes. And did they do it within that four year window? They sold in March and they bought in June, which is within the 12 months before. So let's have a look at how that would look if we did a computation for it. So we have our proceeds from the question. Less our cost. Four 
from the question. Proceeds less cost it equals a gain of 250,000. Now we have to take off that indexation allowance and we use the factor from the question and multiply it by the cost. which gives us another 139,350 uh, deduction from the calculation, giving us a gain of 110,650. Now, because the uh, everything was fully reinvested and we've managed to tick all the conditions, that can be rolled over or deferred until such times as the land is sold. Now when you do one of these, every time you do one of these, you need to do a base cost for the new asset. So the cost of the new asset was £500,000 from the question, less our rollover relief Oops, there's three S's we know. We don't need the third one. Let's put that in there. 110,650, giving us a base cost of 389,350 pounds. Always do the base cost after you've finished because that's important for future and it will gain you an extra mark for that. That's really good. So that's what you need to be doing with that. Example number two now. A Limited bought land for use in a building for £200,000 in May 2003. The land was sold in March 2023 for £350,000. In September 2024, A bought a factory for use in the business of £335,000. Have they reinvested all the proceeds? Mm -mm. Not all reinvested. Not all all reinvested okay all the other conditions are met inside the timeline both assets are business assets and are used in the business so let's have a look at how that would look if we did it as a model answer proceeds less cost from the question indexation factor from the question times the cost gives us indexation, gives us a gain of 41,400. That's a chargeable gain which will go in the TTP for the limited company and they will pay tax at 19% on that. But as we looked at the question, they did not reinvest all the proceeds. That then becomes chargeable. So rollover. Now this is where, as I mentioned before, you can do computations from the top down and then from the bottom up. Now at the end of the day, that's going to be chargeable. This rollover relief is therefore the balancing figure. So that's the balancing figure. So sometimes you have to do it top down bottom up which means that the base cost of the new factory has the smaller amount in it um, you can see therefore the gain deferred um, you can write it all out you can do it the way I've done it down to 41,000 and then put this calculation in here as long as you explain to the examiner what it is that you've done or you can do the bottom up work out the balancing figure of 26,400 and then put that in there and explain that this partial reinvestment has occurred and therefore this is what you have done with that um, answer always if it's gone through your mind and you've thought i need to i need to do this i need to do that this rule applies here make sure make sure please that you write it down so the examiner can see exactly what you had done. Again, depreciating assets. This is a repeat of a previous chapter.
you should have watched that previous chapter and dealt with all the examples and the questions for individuals for these depreciating assets. Just a quick recap. Um, an asset for, that is depreciating is one with a, a maximum and life of 60 years or fixed plant and machinery. And it gives you a note there of what we are going to be um, examined on. And the effect of this, these are the rules if you remember. It's held over. Okay, it is not deducted from the cost of the new asset. So it's held over until the earliest of when you dispose of it, when it ceases to be used in trade, or 10 years, whichever is um, the earliest of those. And we have an example here, example number three. Lots of um, indexation factors that we need to bear in mind with this. So why are limited bought land for use in the business in April 1997 for £200,000? The land was sold for £350,000 in May 2016. And in March 2017, they bought some fixed plant for use in the business costing £390,000. That was then sold in February 2023 when they have a year end of the 31st of March. Calculate the chargeable gains as far as possible for two years. The year ended March 2017 when this was sold. And then 2023 when the fixed plant was sold. And we've got some indexation factors that we need to look at there. So let's have a look at the answers. So in in this would be the uh, seventeen counts to March seventeen. We have the proceeds of three fifty from the question less the cost. Let's just go back and check those are what we're happy with. There's the cost. There's the proceeds. Yep, we're happy with those. Indexation factor from the question against the cost gives us a gain of 77,800. Now the gain is deferred due to the purchase of plant and machinery within the three years. So it fulfills all the conditions for rollover and will be chargeable in 2023 when the depreciating asset is sold. Um, or ceases to be used in the trade, which is probably the same date. And this will be earlier of the 10 years, earlier than 10 years. So it will be chargeable in that period. Now, when the replacement asset is a depreciating asset and the gain is deferred, as in B above, However, if a non-depreciating asset is purchased before the deferred gain crystallizes, the original gain may be rolled over against the cost of the new non-depreciating asset and will only crystallize on the sale of that non-depreciating asset. In other words, um, the, the depreciating asset is a temporary measure, so you could hold it over into there and if you then buy something that you can claim rollover on, you can defer it back into the asset that's rolled over. You will never have to do one of those in an exam, I would have thought. If you do, you're very, very unlucky because it's a, it's, a, it's a twofold thing. But rollover relief and holdover relief are the two most important ones for companies. So go through this chapter again. Go back and do the individual's chapter on um, rollover relief and all the other reliefs and make sure that you understand rollover relief and holdover relief properly. It's dealt with in quite a lot of depth in that chapter and then come back and do this again. And then when you're happy, we have practice question 23.